Greetings, this is September 3rd at 9 a.m. We are looking at the Beto Tree Cam. Uh, the link is below, and it looks like a very beautiful morning other than that haze in the background. If we jump to the wind, we can see it's virtually nothing, uh, one kilometer an hour, and that's at the fire line. Uh, we are looking for the wind to increase up to 13 kilometers an hour this afternoon and we could see gusts up to 36 kilometers an hour the good thing is it should be coming from the north and this could push the fire head uh, back in on itself and away from the interlakes area and highway 24. let's take a look at the infrared for this morning uh, this came at uh, quarter to eight and we are seeing updated infrared and if you look to the northeast that's the upper right-hand portion of your screen. We see Sheridan Lake and new six-hour hotspots encroaching upon the southwest shore. If we look a little bit closer, we can see uh, we're talking meters, 350 meters to 500 meters uh, away from the southwest shore uh, near the P Paradise Bay area. And this confirms reports and some photographic evidence that uh, fire had come along the southwest shore yesterday and we can see a lot of random activity in the six hour time period in this region to the southwest of Sheridan Lake however again those winds will be aiding uh, wildfire crews in pushing a lot of this activity back south and in on itself so we may even see some controlled burning in this area to uh, rid potential fuel hazard if the wind shifts again and comes from the south if we zoom out now and take a look at green lake watch lake and pressy lake we can see new activity within this fire flank at the top of Mount Jim and kind of scattered throughout. Uh, there are a couple fringe elements at the uh, south end of Mount Jim and we're seeing a lot of activity pushing to the east away from Pressy Lake, uh, away from Watch Lake and away from Green Lake. A lot of that activity is now going over to east towards North Bonaparte Road and the Ray Field. Strategically this looks good for uh, Green Lake, Pressy Lake and Watch Lake. If we move further south again on the left hand portion of your screen you can see Hutchinson Lake and those new six hour infrared have turned orange. There's no growth directly north of Hutchinson Lake However, four kilometers northeast, we are seeing some new hot spots and they look to be approaching North Bonaparte Road at the top of your screen. If we look at Young Lake at the lower right portion of the screen, I can see two infrared uh, south of the lake in that corner, uh, the southeast portion, and I'm seeing one north and I'm seeing a one new six hour infrared to the southwest approximately three kilometers. Now all of these infrared are either within or at the fringes of existing uh, 24 hour infrared. I'm not seeing any outliers trying to make a break for it. However I think we do have to watch this uh, couple of new six hour infrared they're at the north side of the lake and with this wind now coming in from the north this could be an area that we've got to watch today just to see that there's no further movement southwards now we're going to scroll down a little bit more and we're looking at loon lake and high Heam lake and if you look to the east of loon lake between the pipeline and the road there has been expansion in new six hour infrared to the east uh, that's been a pocket we've been watching yesterday and it seems to be joining up with some established 24 hour old infrared right at the road also east of the activity at high Heam, we can see uh, maybe five or six infrared that have gone eastwards of the road uh, they look like they're on an approach towards 
the Dead Man River, uh, you're still could be five, six kilometers away in that area. There are some forested pockets. However, this satellite imagery may be out of date. I'm always referring to the August 22nd Landsat photo to get more accurate uh, indication of what plant life and forestation is on the ground currently. Let's jump over to the NRC data and see if we can get some confirmation of the activity going on the northeast flank south of Sheridan. And here we see all 24 hour indications. That's the six hour update, the 12 hour update, and the 24. And yes, we see extensive activity southwest of Sheridan. A lot of patterning among random activity so we could have some control strategies going on there and I'm going to speculate that if wildfire crews are anticipating a consistent north wind they may be attempting some back burning in order to reduce fuel let's go to the 12 and 6 hour maps combined to see the most recent activity and yes uh, some random uh, volatility overlaid with what I've been calling a controlled infrared signature. It uh, looks like some patterning. And if we go to the six hour map alone, it uh, becomes quite evident. I am seeing some random hot spots in the six hour group uh, contained within these fire pockets, but most of it is overlaid with this patterning. So that's something to consider. I will say that I expected a lot more growth. Uh, it appears that wildfire crews have been able to maintain a very volatile situation with minimal expansion on the fire front. I was very concerned about uh, growth eastwards and it, it seems to be held at the Rayfield River there in these forested blocks. So with the winds changing and now coming from the north, I won't say that uh, we have escaped this situation, but it looks better for today. We will have to watch what happens with the peak winds this afternoon, that three o'clock breeze. And as soon as I get enough new information for an update, I'll post it. Please be safe, everyone. This is an act of wildfire and check the uh, official links and bulletins, the maps below. And thank you for watching.